Today, we're looking at the first 10 things you should do if you've just got your brand new Samsung Galaxy S23. These tips and tricks will help you get the most out of One UI 5.1 and this phone's features, battery life, as well as the performance. But before we get started, I am doing a giveaway on this brand new iPhone 14 Pro. If you want a chance to win, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment with your Instagram username, and then follow me on Instagram, where I will announce the winner on March the 12th. All right, so to start, let's go ahead and take a look at customizing the lock screen. Now to do this, we're gonna go into the settings menu and then we're gonna to scroll to where we find the lock screen. Now from here, we have a few different options. And the first thing we're gonna click on here is the lock screen itself. And this will allow us to customize the visual look of the lock screen. Uh, so first here, we can now tap on the clock and you can see we have a range of different clocks to choose from. Uh, from here, we can also customize this further. Uh, we can change the color, for example. I like to have mine sort of match the, uh, the color of my wallpaper. Uh, you even have an analog clock, which I think looks quite classy, so I like to use that. Uh, and then from there, you can also customize the size further. I like it a little bit bigger, uh, but this really does open the door to more customization, and I love to see it. Now, uh, secondly, we can also change the uh, way that notifications are displayed on the lock screen. So if we tap into these little icons here, um, you can choose to have no notification show or only have the icon show or have the full notification show. So you can see here uh, what that would look like. Uh, I like the minimalistic approach of just showing the icons. Uh, you can then also change the transparency. That is, if you were to show the full notifications uh, and then also change the order as well. Uh, and then finally, we're also able to also change the toggles that we have here on the bottom of the screen. Uh, really cool to be able to customize these. So I like to set mine to the torch here in the bottom left. Always useful, uh, but as you can see, you can also change to shortcuts to various apps. Uh, and then lastly, you're also able to add some contact information to your lock screen. Uh, this may be useful if say your phone is ever lost. Uh, I like to have my name, just a nice little touch. Uh, we go ahead and tap that right there. Uh, and then to change the wallpaper, we can also tap into the wallpapers menu here on the top left. See, we have these new uh, wallpapers specifically for the S23. I think these look really nice, especially because they kind of move a little bit. Uh, we also have your gallery, uh, as well as some other preset wallpapers uh, that you can add as well. And now that we've customized the lock screen, let's take a look at the home screen. Now, first, of course, to move any icons around, you can just press and hold, and you can then freely move them around in this, uh, in this grid here that you have. The same thing goes for widgets. You can go in and move those around. Now, uh, one cool tip with widgets in particular is you now have the ability to stack widgets. So here, for example, I have a calendar widget as well as a reminders widget. What I can do is press and hold on the calendar, drag it on top of the uh, reminders widget, and then I can swipe between the two. And as you can see, uh, that will allow me to uh, have two widgets in one place to sort of save some screen space. Uh, and then to remove them back, I can simply edit the stack and then click and drag or press and hold and drag uh, the calendar out to have it where it was. Now, going back to the uh, settings here, if I scroll down to where we find the home screen section, we also have the option to change the grid size. And this basically determines how many apps you can have shown on your screen. So this will allow you to have uh, less apps, but then have larger icons or more apps uh, with smaller icons. So as you can see, I like to have mine set to the standard four by five grid, both on the app screen as well, uh, the home screen as well as the app screen. So the home screen is here, so that will show you five in the vertical and four in the uh, horizontal. And then the same goes for the app screen. And this is your uh, main app screen, which will show, of course, all of your apps. And you can separately set that uh, depending on uh, what your preference is. And you can also have it in a folder as well. So you can have, I like mine to have a little bit, uh, to be a little bit smaller in the folder just so that it doesn't get too cluttered. Uh, again, if you do want to have more apps shown on your uh, home screen, you can see that you're effectively creating more screen space here. Uh, so this is good for those that want uh, more apps to show. Again, though, uh, your icons will get a little bit smaller, so that is something to bear in mind. Now, one of my favorite features uh, of Android is the ability to multitask. You can have uh, two apps running at once. So here, for example, I can have my YouTube app open, I can have a YouTube video playing, and then I can also scroll down here and have a uh, Chrome window to do, say, some research, be on Amazon or reading up reviews or anything like that on a product. I can also easily resize the windows by simply swiping them uh, swiping the, the, the divider here in the middle. Now, how do we do this? Well, first, let's go ahead and open up an app. So we'll open up, say, YouTube. Uh, and then if we enter the multitasking menu, we then have the option to tap on the icon. 
and then we can open in split view. And this will then allow us to select a secondary app to open. Now, bear in mind, not all applications support this split screen view. I think Instagram is a common one uh, that you may wanna use, but unfortunately doesn't support this. Uh, but a lot of the first, I think most of the first party apps uh, certainly do. So again here, let's say we have YouTube open uh, and let's open up, let's say a Chrome window here. So there you go, we can have the Amazon web page and that. Now, uh, this is of course a very useful way to have two apps open, uh, but let's say you do this often and you wanna have a shortcut to quickly access access two apps or essentially open two apps at once. Well, what you can do is press on the little three dot menu in the middle. Uh, and then we also have the option to add it here as a little star. And this will allow us to add the pair to the home screen. And as you can see, we now, if I go back to the home screen here, we now have a new icon up. Oh, there it is a new icon, which as you can see, sort of combines two apps that every time we tap on that, it's going to open those two instances of those applications and also save exactly uh, where we have it in terms of the space. So whether you want to dedicate more screen space to YouTube uh, or more to Amazon. Again, very useful. Uh, I'm gonna remove this one here as I already happen to have one here on my lock screen, uh, on my home screen. Very useful. Quickly uh, add open two apps at once and use them. Apple, please add this to the iPhone as well. A feature you're probably gonna use a lot throughout the day uh, is the toggle. So if we swipe down from the top right, that is this menu right here, which allows you to quickly uh, access and change core system functions. Super useful, uh, but made even better if you customize this. So what you can do is you can scroll down and this will then showcase all of the toggles and also uh, give us access to this little three dot menu. And if we tap on that, we have the ability to edit the buttons. Now from here, you can see all the different buttons to choose from. Uh, I see there's quite a wide range and let's say I want to add on the always on display, simply drag that in and then place it wherever I want. See, I can even move it to a separate page. And there you go, that will then be permanently placed in the menu. Now it's important to note that the first six icons are essentially the most important as those are the ones that will always show. As you can see, if I go back here and swipe down, see it's those first six that always show. So I suggest putting your most uh, commonly used ones uh, in that location. Now, something that I use uh, very often throughout the day is the brightness toggle. I like to adjust this throughout the day uh, and having to first swipe down and then swipe again to reveal it, it's just one extra step. So instead, I like to have the brightness uh, slider show always. And how to do this is we go back to the three dot menu here uh, and then we have the option to the quick panel layout and then we tap on brightness control and this will then allow us to always show that brightness control uh, and again, always have it in reach very quickly, uh, swipe it right like so. Uh, and adjust it on the go. And then in that same menu, uh, if I scroll down here, go back to that three dot menu, we also have the option to change some settings in the status bar. Now the status bar uh, is going to be the icons that you see here in the sort of top left of your display. So you do have the option to showcase notification icons. So you can have, uh, oh, you can have either the uh, three most recent or specific applications as well. Uh, this can be useful. Personally, I prefer to just have none show as it's just a little bit more clean. Uh, I do, however, like to have the battery percentage show on the top right. Battery life on the uh, S23 is vastly improved over the S22, uh, but it's still good to keep an eye on that battery life. And this brings us uh, to a very small, but I think important feature uh, or setting that I instantly change when I get uh, my new S23. Uh, we're gonna go into settings and then select the advanced features. And then we're gonna tap on the side key. Now, uh, out of the box, if you press and hold the side key, again, that's the button here, you'll find below the uh, volume switch, Press and holding that will launch Bixby. Now, Bixby, let's just say it's not the best, uh, it's it, it's not the smartest, uh, smart assistant, shall we say. So I think if you're on this phone, it's better to use uh, Google's uh, rather than Samsung's. But anyway, uh, what you can also do is change that to power off the, uh, the phone. So if you press and hold it, you'll then get this power off menu, which I think is uh, more useful uh, and allows you to more quickly turn off your phone. Uh, also, uh, on top of that as well, you also have the option to change what a double tap does. So I like to have this set to the camera. Um, you can also have it set to a specific app. So as you can see, if I double tap that side button, quickly want to capture a shot, boom, the camera opens. Uh, and this is of course great as the camera on the S23 is very nice. But just as nice as the camera is the display of this phone and it is made even better if we optimize it in the settings. So we're gonna open up the settings uh, option here or the settings menu once again, and then we're gonna scroll to where we find display. And there's a few different settings here that I like to choose. Uh, first, you can switch between your light and dark mode. I think both are great, uh, but personally, I like to have mine set to a schedule. So if we go to the dark mode uh, settings here, you can also have this automatically switch depending on the time of day uh, or to co coincide with the sun. So I like to have mine in dark mode at night. I find it's a little bit more pleasing on the eyes, not as bright, uh, but then during the day, uh, light mode is still easier to read. So get the best of both by setting a schedule. 
Then if we go down here, we have, of course, your brightness toggle and adaptive brightness, which is uh, basically auto brightness. I suggest turning this on. I have it off for the video here. But normally speaking, uh, this is good to have on. I find uh, the auto brightness on the S23 to be quite effective where it gets bright enough in the sun uh, and then also dim enough at night. Uh, if you are, however, using manual brightness like I am here, you do have the option to also turn on extra brightness to make your screen extra bright. Uh, though, again, this will cost some battery. And beneath that, we have the option for Eye Comfort Shield. Now, what this does, as you can see, if I toggle it here, uh, the screen gets a very slight orangish or warmer tone. Uh, and what this does is it's going to limit the amount of blue light that's coming from the display. Now, if you don't know, uh, blue light can be harmful to your health. Uh, it can affect your sleep. And for some people, it can also cause headaches and things like that. So if you are prone to that, uh, this is good to use. And you can actually tap in further and even enhance the comfort. Uh, comfort and this is going to increase things like contrast to make your text even easier to read. Uh, a useful feature, though my only suggestion is to make sure to not use this when you're editing things like photos and videos, as of course this is going to alter the color uh, reproduction of your display. And when you're doing that, you want your screen to be as accurate as possible uh, to not have all of your images coming out orange. Um, speaking of color reproduction, beneath that we have the option for the screen mode. Now, naturally speaking, uh, looking at Samsung displays, they are a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more, well, vivid compared to other displays, and this makes colors really pop, uh, and I think this looks great. However, if you want a more toned down or neutral look, especially if you're coming from an iPhone, uh, switching it to the neutral, uh, natural uh, color profile will be a little bit more toned down and I think a little bit more true to life. So if you are coming from an iPhone and switching to your first S23, this will more closely represent what you're used to. Uh, but again, if you like your colors to really pop, uh, then keep it on vivid, which I believe is the standard mode as well. And then let's take a look at the edge panel. Now the edge panel is a pretty cool feature uh, that you get here on Samsung. And that's this little bar you can see here on the left here. If I swipe in, you can see it's this little shortcut menu uh, for which I can have my recent application show, uh, as well as a custom list of apps, including that, uh, that dual app uh, save that I did earlier. Uh, really cool feature. I've actually moved mine to the left here as I am left-handed, so that makes it easier for me to swipe with my thumb. Uh, and we can customize this quite far. So if I go ahead uh, and tap into the edge panel here, you can see that we can obviously turn it on or off. You can turn this off if you like, but I find it to be minimally obtrusive uh, and still quite useful. And then you can even customize the panel itself. So you can have uh, things like widgets, you can have photos, uh, news feeds, even people have quick access to your uh, favorite contacts, emergency contacts. Uh, but I like to have the uh, general list of apps. Um, we also have the option here, as you can see, if I tap in uh, to change the uh, color, we can also change the position for left and right. Again, if you're left-handed, keep it on the left, at least I would uh, change the transparency. It really customizes to your heart's content. That's really one of the great things about Android. Uh, you can really get the most out of this phone and customize it to exactly what you need. Now, one of the most important settings, uh, and the first, I would say, thing that I change on any uh, Samsung phone is the navigation bar. And this, as you've uh, probably noticed throughout this video, I've been swiping uh, to switch between the apps, close apps, and uh, go into the multitasking menu, as opposed to having the standard back and home button uh, that you will see in more classic or older versions of Android. So if we tap into the navigation bar, we can switch between the two. So as you can see, we can go and have the buttons, which you're probably familiar with. Again, if you're used to older versions of Android, where you have the home button, your multitasking button, and then your back button as well. Um, this works, and I think if you're used to it, you may be happy with it. But I personally, especially as someone who uses an iPhone as well, much prefer the swipe gestures as this enables more screen space because instead of having those buttons always there, you just have this very subtle little bar and it's just much more fluid and easy to quickly swipe, I think up and then over uh, to the right for the multitasking menu. So definitely suggest switching this to the swipe gestures. Trust me, it may take a little bit of getting used to if you're not already, but this will be worth it. Another cool uh, customization feature here is if we go back to the main page of the settings and click on wallpaper and style, we have the option to turn on color palette. Now this is going to change the uh, sort of UI color to match your wallpaper. So you can see I have this nice and warm sort of brown goldish uh, wallpaper and you see the color palette matches that. So I have several to choose from here. I like the secondary one. It kind of makes Android feel uh, a little bit more cohesive. Uh, and I, I really like this. And you can of course turn this off if you like as well. You can also add custom colors. Uh, and this up here will give you a preview of what it looks like. Uh, but I highly recommend doing this as I think it just makes the, feel more, uh, makes the phone feel more together. Uh, and again, those colors will just be more in sync uh, with your wallpaper and whatever you choose to uh, style your phone as.
A small but I think useful feature as well is if we go into the advanced features, tap on motions and gestures, we have the option to turn on lift to wake. Now as default this is off, I like to have this on. Uh, just to quickly show you what this does, you can see if I turn off the phone, have it resting on the table, I pick up the phone without touching the display or the side button, the screen will wake. And this will allow you to quickly see your home screen uh, as well as any notifications that you may have. So I like to have this on. Uh, again, if you are very concerned about battery life, you could choose to turn this off. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, I like to have this on. Just a nice little quality of life feature. One of the new things uh, that is brought with One UI 5.1 is modes and routines. So if we go into the uh, main section here of the uh, of the settings page, we tap on modes and routines. And this allows you to essentially set specific profiles depending on what you're doing throughout the day to sort of alter how your phone behaves in terms of what notifications and calls and apps uh, you will allow to come in uh, versus not. So you can see you have different, different presets here. You can also add a custom mode. Uh, the one that I suggest everyone sets up is a sleep mode. So if we go and tap into this here, you can see that you can have this trigger automatically depending on the time of day. You can also add several conditions. You can even have this location based. So for example, it knows when you're home, it's gonna turn this automatically on. Again, I like to have mine throughout the night. So 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., this mode will automatically trigger. Now, what does this mean? Well, this will essentially turn on do not disturb. And as you can see, if I tap into the setting here, you can spe specify which calls and messages you'd like to come in as well as notifications from apps. So at night, especially if my phone goes off, I want it to be something important. Otherwise, it does not need to bother me uh, throughout the day, but especially at night. So when we go into calls and messages here, uh, you can see, oh, there we go. You can see that I only allow calls from my contacts and repeated calls. So if someone calls twice, I basically interpret that as something urgent or an emergency, in which case I will always answer. But if someone calls once and I don't recognize the number, uh, they don't need to be calling me at night. And for messages, I prefer to turn these off as well. Uh, and the same thing can be done for apps. If we go back here, uh, you can also allow specific applications. So for example, messaging apps, maybe certain messaging apps, but certainly not things like games or I don't know, shopping apps, these kind of things don't need to be bothering you at night. So definitely suggest turning this on. Uh, and with that, you can also change the look of your phone. So you can have, make sure that your dark mode is always on as well as that eye comfort shield. The one we looked at earlier, uh, I have this automatically trigger at night as well. And you can also have it change to a more minimalistic, perhaps a darker wallpaper if you like. Now, this is a really important uh, and pretty big battery tip as well that I think is good for not just extending your battery life, but also your well-being, and that is looking at your notifications. Uh, chances are all, most if not all applications on your phone are gonna want to send you notifications at some point, uh, but the reality is the vast majority of them don't need to be doing so. So my suggestion is to go into your notification settings and then manually swipe through and turn on or off uh, which you do and don't want sending you notifications. You can see if I like, scroll through this here, uh, over half of mine are just off. They don't need to be sending me notifications. I use the app when I want it and that's it. I don't need to hear from it otherwise. Uh, so I only turn on things like finance apps or uh, messaging apps, uh, but things like here, like Spotify, for example, TikTok, Tips, Samsung Health, right? All these apps uh, just don't need to be bothering me or sending me any notifications. Uh, so this also allows you to know that when your phone goes off, uh, it is something important. Also, uh, if ever your phone is acting a little bit slow or a little bit strange, uh, what you can do now is in these settings, we can scroll down to where we find the um, battery and device care tab. And this is going to actually run a quick diagnostics check and allow you to see how much storage you have available, battery as well as your memory. Uh, and you can also optimize this again if you find your uh, phone is running a bit slow. Uh, and if you do find there are actual problems with your phone, say one of your cameras or something is not functioning, you can run a full diagnostics check here. This will take a little bit. Uh, but this will allow you to really sort of see whether everything is working uh, on your phone or not. So nice to have this feature built in. That way, if you have an issue, you can reach out for help. Uh, but this here generally gives you a good overview of how your phone is performing. But again, I don't think you're gonna need to do this much on this phone as the uh, Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 2 chip is very fast. Let's optimize the uh, sound and vibration. So if we go over to the main page, again, of the settings menu, uh, we can go to the sound, sound and vibration uh, tab here. Generally speaking, I like to keep my phone on vibrate. Uh, I always have it in my pocket or on a table next to me. So it's close enough to a point where I can hear or feel that vibration. I don't need a ringtone that's loud and gonna be you know, disturbing everyone else. So keep it on vibrate, that's my suggestion. Uh, you also do have the option to change the vibration intensity. So you can turn this up or down. Uh, I think it's especially cool that you can change it depending on what notification comes in. So 
if something important comes in, let's say a call or a notification from a messaging app or something, you can have that vibration be uh, stronger. Whereas other things that are less important, say your system or even media, you can go in and turn this down. So it'll be a very light vibration. Uh, so in your pocket, for example, you can kind of already sense what's come in just from the feel of the vibration. It's a nice touch. Uh, and I like to see this level of customization. And then if we scroll down to where we find sound quality and effects, I highly recommend turning on Dolby Atmos. Now, if you don't know what Dolby Atmos is, uh, it essentially recreates a more immersive uh, and 3D almost sounding sound. And this will actually be applied to all of the media that you watch on this phone, whether it be videos or music. Uh, and the same thing goes for gaming. And I think this generally improves the audio experience. So my tip is to turn on both. Uh, again, trust me, uh, this is gonna make the sound even better. And then finally, guys, uh, I want to show you some really useful security uh, settings that I think everyone should set uh, and make sure are properly uh, installed on their phone here. So if we go to the main page of the settings here, we're going to go back to the previous menu where we looked at earlier of the lock screen. And then we're going to tap on this first option here, uh, which you need to quickly type in our pin. And here we go. So first uh, we can go ahead and choose, we tap on the pin here, uh, we can choose our pin, but also importantly, we can actually have our phone unlock without having to press okay. So if say your fingerprint is not red or you've just restarted your phone, you need to type in your pin, it's more quickly for it to automatically unlock after entering that last digit rather than having to also press okay. So you're essentially using a four, uh, four tap gesture versus a five tap gesture. So I think once the pin is correct, that's safe enough, it should automatically log you in. So you can turn on that setting here by tapping uh, that little check mark there. Now looking down uh, under the biometric section, uh, we have two choices here on the S23. So we can use either a face unlock or the fingerprint. Now the face unlock is nice to have, but it is nowhere as good or reliable as say face ID is on your iPhone. So instead I highly recommend using the fingerprint. Uh, not only is it faster, it is safer and also more reliable. So in terms of biometrics, just use that fingerprint under, uh, under, under, under screen fingerprint sensor, there it is, uh, which is much faster. And again, the go-to way that I unlock my phone and I suggest you do the same. And then if we go back, uh, we have the secure lock settings. Now there's a few really useful tips here uh, that I suggest you turn on. And the first is to have it automatically lock uh, or do a factory reset after typing in the password incorrectly for 20 times. If say ever your phone is lost uh, or stolen, the first thing that person is probably gonna do is try to brute force their way into your phone to unlock it. And at the end of the day, uh, the phone is expensive, yes, but you can't really put a price on all of your personal data. So this way, after 20 incorrect attempts on the password, your phone will automatically erase itself. And therefore, you know, that even if your phone is lost and no longer safe, uh, your data will be. So definitely suggest turning this on. Uh, only tip though, is make sure you have your password written down somewhere. Uh, as if you are prone to forgetting it, uh, this may lead to a automatic reset. Although uh, if you have your, uh, your data backed up, then that should be fine. But all right, guys, those are the first things that I did on my brand new S23. Uh, this is a really fantastic phone, and I think these tips and tricks are going to help you get the even more out of this phone uh, in terms of the features, the performance, and of course, also the battery life. If you guys have any tips that I haven't mentioned in this video, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave them down in the comment section. Uh, and thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions at all. Uh, as always, I'll leave the purchase links to the S23 in the description. And be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching. And take care.